guys, Jenny with On Fire Fit, and welcome to another episode of High Heel Hallelujah. Today I am talking about the spirit of truth. But first, let's look at the shoes. All right, here is the shoe, and I don't recall what the brand is. Somebody pronounced that one for me. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but very cute shoes. And these are Geo stockings. I want to thank all of you who watch my videos, even though you may be of a different faith or belief than me. I love that we can listen and talk and have conversations. And I definitely get comments from people of all different beliefs. And isn't it amazing that we can all come together and respect each other and talk and listen? It, sometimes I think that in the world that is a lost art, but somehow we manage to do that here. So thank you for that. I am gonna talk about something that has been popping up in different ways in my current situation in life and you know that I always talk about and bring you along for my real life things that are happening. I am part of a wonderful class that a few of my friends are a part of and Pastor Jim was talking about the Holy Spirit and how much the spirit is not being tapped into or people are not recognizing or we're just not maybe in full awareness of what we have and what we have access to. And don't tune me out because I think that you may like to think about this in a different way than maybe a religious way that you thought about it before. So as we're talking about that, and then I'm also doing a Bible study with a group of women. And one of the lessons by Priscilla Shire, who I just love her way of explaining things, she was talking about her dad, who's Dr. Tony Evans, and how when she was a child, he was very fun, fun loving. And when they would do hide and seek and things like that, he would hide, but he wouldn't hide in a way that really made it hard for little children to find him. There was always a part of him kind of sticking out and he was very clearly some, not that well hidden for them, right? And if you have kids or you remember growing up and you had this experience, this is something that I thought, oh my goodness, I totally know what she's talking about because I used to do that with my kids too. You didn't hide so much that they're like frustrated by it, but just enough for it to be fun, kind of an adventure and for them to get excited. And she talked about how that is like how God, how the Holy Spirit is with us. We have this adventure that we get to go on discovering him, finding him. And he's not hiding out of maliciousness or to frustrate, but because he loves to reveal himself. He loves to take us on that adventure. And I have discovered that for many years. And as I continue to discover it more, it becomes more and more and more exciting and fun. And I just think that sometimes we get so caught up in routine or those of us who grew up in the church, it can become just a religious ritual of these are the things we do and we've lost the adventure, we've lost the curiosity, we've lost the, the joy of discovery. And I wanna just explain a little bit about 
the spirit of truth because I think that even growing up, it took me a long time, even into an adulthood, to really fully understand and grasp the concept of the spirit of truth. So if you look in the Bible, the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit is there, but not quite as blatantly, or you don't hear about the Holy Spirit quite as much. But during that time, before Jesus came, the Spirit would be put on people or in people for a certain time and period. So God had a way of revealing himself to the people back in those days, sometimes through prophets, sometimes through very unusual things like talking through a donkey or writing on a wall or a lot of times through people. And the Holy Spirit would come upon people. And then somebody like David, who is well represented in the Bible, he wrote a lot of the Psalms, he even said at one point, don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. He knew the value of the Holy Spirit. But back then, the Holy Spirit would come on people and then the Holy Spirit could go. And the reason that that happened is because of the way God revealed his plan. When Jesus came, God in the flesh, he stood in our place and took the penalty that we can't even earn or pay off or, well, we've earned the penalty, but we can't pay it off. We have, you know, so many things that we do wrong all the time and we just cannot have a holy God live inside of an unholy place, right? God being perfect and holy cannot live inside of a person that is full of mistakes, full of problems and all of that. However, he did provide the way. So Jesus came and took our place, took that penalty. And then by believing, we can have his spirit. And that at that point, we don't have to pray that the spirit would keep coming or staying, the spirit is there. And we have the ability to carry the spirit of truth with us all the time. I think that sometimes we don't feel like it because we get caught up in the world, in our flesh, we make a lot of mistakes, we think, you know, I'm, I'm trying to earn my way to goodness. That's kind of a typical human way. We really want to always earn our way and feel like we have to do things a certain way. But when you have the spirit of truth, he convicts you, but he doesn't condemn you. He doesn't make you feel like you have a laundry list of things that you have to do. You have the spirit to just guide you and advocate for you and be your counselor every step of the way. And I think that a lot of times we don't tap into that. Maybe we get distracted by the world. Maybe we get distracted by being human and feeling like I have to do this list of things. I know for me, that does tend to be more of my personality type. I like to know what to do, get it done, check it off the list. But when you live by the spirit, it's so much more of an adventure than just a duty list. One little example today that I think is kind of interesting. And yet I thought I'm going to use it and talk about it today because God speaks to us in such interesting and different ways. So I was studying on the Holy Spirit and I was praying for our daughter because she was having a little bit of a rough morning and then she was going off to school. And I got this feeling like 324, just that number, 324. And it's for Talia. And I'm like, okay, 
that doesn't make much sense, but okay. So I sent her a text and I said, I feel like I'm supposed to tell you 324. <laughs> I'm not sure why. And she had just arrived at school and she was walking through the parking lot and her eyes landed on this license plate and the number 324 was there. And she was like, oh my goodness. And she ended up telling me that it's kind of, there's a lot of numbers within the Bible and the whole, I won't even get into because I have not studied this in any great, well, not at all. Pastor Jim has done a lot of study on this, but I asked Talia, what is that? 324 and she said it means that God is telling you that you're on the right path now we can debate about what that means and what you know whether or not that's true but the one thing that I knew for sure was that God wanted her to know that she is not alone and that he is thinking of her and he is going to find all kinds of ways of showing her and communicating with her and I thought I kind of hesitated about sending her this 324 because I'm like, it doesn't make any sense to me. But as soon as she got that message and saw that license plate all at once, it was a message that she needed in that moment. And I think that that's the adventure of the Holy Spirit, that we get this divine, joyful adventure of discovering how much God loves us, how much God wants to be in this relationship and talk and communicate. And, you know, I looked over my life this morning kind of quickly in my mind about, because I was feeling a little bit just like ho-hum, you know, I don't know if you get like that, but just kind of that, you know, and I thought I'm going to start scanning over my life. And I started to just think about my work life and how I can look back and see God's hand in my work life in such mind blowing detail. I don't, I won't even try to get into all of the specifics of it. But as I thought about that, I thought that is the adventure of the spirit leading us directing us, guiding us, the excitement of knowing that we, we don't have to figure this out on our own. We have the spirit of truth. And I think the more that we yield and listen and then do, the more we get of that. And that I think is such a fun way to live. So if you don't even have a clue about the spirit of truth, I would just invite you to ask him to reveal himself to you and just say, I would like to hear more about that. Show yourself to me. And I think God loves to do that. So Father God, thank you so much for the people that you have brought here. Thank you so much for the joy and adventure of having your spirit to guide and lead us and show us your love through every day in so many ways. Help us not to miss it. Help us just to enjoy this adventure that as we seek you, we'll find you and that you don't hide yourself in a way that would frustrate us, but just enough to make it fun that we have, we have to go hunting and searching and having fun in this relationship. Thank you, God. Thank you that you do that for us and that you have blessed us so much. I pray for anyone here that might not know your spirit, that they would be open, that they might have a soft heart toward the spirit of truth, that you would come quickly, overflow them, just overwhelm them with your love. And I thank you and praise you that they're here. And I just pray for blessings. Let your blessings flow on over and through them. In Jesus name. Amen. All right, let's go down and take a walk. And thanks so much for being here and for listening. And I hope that you're having an on fire day.